Hey everybody, I'm Jordan with PQ.com. And I'm Josh. Uh, it's Patch Tuesday. Again? Again. They right. seem to do it every month. Yep. So that means it's PDQ and A, but before we do that, we can dive into uh, the highlights. And or lowlights. If you ignore May 30th, this, mm-hmm. is, this is like an ideal month for Patch Tuesday. I think security's done. Did, we, did Microsoft win the security game? I, it's a, yeah, I think, I think hackers have given up. Nothing, nothing of no, huh? <laughs> there was there was sixty total, which okay. I actually think that used to be like the standard, but now it's that's an extremely low number. Mm-hmm. There was only three critical. Okay. There were none that were already known, and none actively being exploited. Not not counting May thirtieth. Like I said, we're ignoring. Hey, it's summer vacation. Everyone's <laughs> taking a break. I get it. Yeah. So one of the one of the criticals was pretty bad though. It was uh, I remember last month they had the DFS where they had to patch version two and version three. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looked almost identical, but this time it's for version 4.1, which tells me that it probably existed there already. It just wasn't patched. Uh, <laughs> Don't tell anybody yet. Yeah, so if you changed your environment to use NFS 4.1 because of, of last month's patch, I got some bad news for you. No, you just got to patch that too. Yeah. So they, ha- they have in there some, like, some quick PowerShell to disable. Mm-hmm. Uh, know, know how that's going to impact your system before you do that. You're better off just patching mm-hmm. than, than disabling something that might... Bring your system down. Nice. Jordan made a video if you'd like to know more. Oh, and I'm so good in it. <laughs> I crushed that video. He's really, that really good, guys. Like, <laughs> I, know, I don't want to brag, but I was pretty great. Like, if you c- yep. click play on this video, like, you're about to have an experience yeah. with Jordan's performance. They said that ears couldn't have candy. <laughs> they were wrong. <laughs> He's won awards for it. The, the internal All right, how many awards. questions do All we right, have? Let's yeah. start questions. Oh, wait, we, we also don't oh, forget. Oh, before we, we do, though, yeah. Yeah. I got to know who's on the board. So, obviously, Jordan, Josh, and Glenn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else wants to? Oh, we'll do audience as well. Okay. Uh, Chase, you want in on this? You know I, you know I always want negative points. <laughs> yes. You can have. Uh, I will be, yeah, the, we'll I will be the buffer for everyone. I will try to answer, guys. I promise. Audience, if you're listening, I'm I'm here for you. Ask ask some audio questions. There we go. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> audio go. engineering questions. There there you go, guys. I'm in it. Kelly, Jake. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll hop in. Why not? Austin All wants right. in. Austin wants in. Yeah, he's part. He's Austin. part of the audience. He's yeah. I mean, if you're in the audience, Brig, Austin, you want. They're, Brig, they're part you want of the audience. audience. You got you got to join oh, the Zoom. Uh, are they part of the audience? Because they have a little gear icon or the uh, the. Uh, well, it just depends on how many wrench categories icon. you want here. <laughs> You're gonna need That's like Excel point. here in a second. All right, we can do pad. we can do audience and then we could do wrenches. Wrenches. <laughs> so that's yeah, Chris Austin. <laughs> and audience, uh, it All is right. PDQ and A. So get those questions in. Just post them here in the chat if you would be so kind as to preface those with the word question. That helps us find them quickly. And helps me copy. So break, break in on answering questions. So if you happen to answer one, if you, get you a point. or yeah, you, you could Austin be in the running one. to win nothing. Oh. The <laughs> right. Is that the Lego point. trophy? We could win pride. Yeah. All right, let's get this started. All right, yeah, let's, let's do it. Going. I'm looking forward to saying I don't know a lot. All right, first question for laptops or VPN connected laptops: deploy fail. How to connect or correct DNS entry for these? E U S A. So, with VPN or laptops where they're coming on and off the network a lot, uh, the only way to correct that is to get more aggressive with your scavenging. But if you go too aggressive, that causes its own own problem. There's no there's no direct. Fix. I think I'm going to say a couple years ago, I wrote some PowerShell that would really aggressively scavenge your DNS. Sure. But that's a uh, that's a run at your own risk. Yeah, the other thing you can do is uh, if you've got your Windows like Active Directory DHCP server issuing those leases and not like a, a firewall device, uh, you can have your DHCP server update uh, those those A records as well. Yeah, and of course, there's not a great answer because it is all dependent on DNS. So if it's if it's hanging on records too long, you can get more aggressive, but yeah, that's something we just have to trial and error and find find the right balance. Mm-hmm. Right on. Next question. 
Gentlemen, is there an easy way to have a column for last logged in user? I'd like an easy way to see whose computer it is, even when they are not logged in. Sincerely, Danielle, uppercase G. Ooh. I believe there is an inventory, right, Jordan? For last logged on? Yeah. Or logged on user. Show that in the, uh, the view there. Uh, that definitely exists in Smart to Play as well. Go back to your quarter, Glenn. We're on inventory. <laughs> <laughs> what am I looking for? Last last logged on user, or yeah. what's, what's the? Uh, what's the uh, it's the the current user right there. The current user. Yep. Like a C. I think it's over there on it's the right, right side. There, huh? Yep. We're we're just gonna make that one uh, fixed instead of trying to move that around. Yeah, so that there. that's who's currently logged on. So if no one is logged on, it's gonna be blank. Yep. Uh, we do have a, a built in not not a built in a PowerShell scanner that you can get from our repo. That we'll go through and we'll find all the logged on users, but that won't put it on this center table. That will put it in a uh, the the PowerShell box, or we'll just open that up real quick. So you could build a collection, uh, or not a collection, but a report of logged on users that just looks at the where's PowerShell. How's the alphabet work? P. I don't think there you've got any PowerShell here. There, I can't. There. I cannot. So if if you download that one for last logged on user, yeah, use last logged on. Mm -hmm. It's right there. As it pulls that in there, it'll fill out this table here. So you can have a report based off of that table, but that's not, that's going to be a report. That's not going to show up in the center console. Gotcha. And that's based, you know, remember that's based off of the last scan. So yeah. if you haven't scanned a machine in a week, it was a user that was logged on a week ago. Yeah. And I don't believe that one is a single user. That one finds the last logon time for everyone that has logged in within the event viewer for logon events. Mm -hmm. So it could be. Five, five to seven. There's only one person that's doing it. It'll just be one name. Cool. Is that two points for Jordan? I think yeah, so. Yeah, it is yeah. Uh, so far. Wow. Do we... This is this is a probably a hard ask because uh, it's live, but is there a way for Glenn to be able to show uh, Smart Deploy doing the same thing? I think... Uh, Can we do a screen... Like a screen if, capture if, type well, uh, if, deal? If Glenn shares his screen... We can throw it up on the uh, TV, but we'll leave it to Glenn. Prepped, though. My demo environment I'm not currently connected to, and I think that jumping on VPN would cause me to lose my connection with this meeting, so I would be happy to present that another time. Right, well, that costs let's, you uh, a point, Let's though. experiment th with this later. Sorry, I just, I just had this idea just now, and I'm like, wait a minute. We could show Smart Deploy. All right. All right well, so yeah, I, I do routinely uh, participate in the Smart Deploy webcast. We do the Deploy mm -hmm. Smarter series where we do deep dives on certain topics within uh, within the Smart Deploy ecosystem. So if you're interested in that, uh, head on over to smartdeploy.com. You can find out the info on those. Okay. We're going to try this for the uh, July edition of PDQ&A. Yeah, because we – well, and we are actually going to be bringing Glenn on in, sometime in July. We'll be doing a Smart Deploy webcast here. Ah, so fantastic. It'll be fun. So in the future, that'll be All right. real handy. But for right now – no points. <laughs> You're aggressive Next question on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan's really happy with those two. <laughs> it's an insurmountable lead. Don't get comfy. What's well, the worst that could happen? I got this. Just like know. the Falcon. Josh always cool. seems to catch up. <laughs> All righty. Well, we got another one? All right, you ready? Yeah, yeah let's go. Okay, here we go. Hey guys, how can we connect to remote nodes, i.e. work from home computers? Is there anything in the works? Sincerely, the K-Flavor of Nick. Uh, I believe we are in the alpha for PDQ Connect, which yep. is an agent-based one. We are hoping for soon, trademark, to go into beta where it's open up to more people, but we don't have an exact date for that yet. You can apply for I think it's pdq.com forward slash beta, he said is a wild guess. Or Kelly's typing it in the chat. All right. Yep. Um, um, and guys, do I need to say else. it? Smart Deploy can do that too. <laughs> yes, it can. Ha, cha, cha, cha. Yeah, yeah. Smart Deploy's got the agent already. <laughs> yeah, you know, outside of a, a product, you know, any okay. VPN that'll allow SMB traffic uh, over it will allow PDQ to pull an inventory to work just fine. It, it, re it requires a bit of configuration and your DNS has to be on point, but it works when it's really dialed in. It does. Right on. I think we almost have to give that quest that that point to to Glenn. Well, yeah, he actually has the well, I got an agent. <laughs> I mean, I, we have a version you can try today, but it's coming to PDQ deploy an inventory soon. That's right. So it, it's it gonna is. it's gonna be there for all the products before too all long. Right. Yeah. Glenn and Jordan get it. Jordan's getting points because he's just jumping on it before Josh does. Well, but, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm more aggressive. That's Focus. that's my uh, my plan. 
It's more dramatic if I let him get a lead first. I don't have to. I don't have to be right. I just have to <laughs> aggressively answer. I'm wondering if there was a payoff beforehand because Josh is just you know, anyway. We'll figure that out later. Next question, ladies and gentlemen. How do I remove auto download approvals? Wes H. Let's so, show it. So, are you saying that you don't want to have an auto approval anymore, or? Or is it more of uh, just for a single package? Or I think you may be talking about the uh, the ones down here no, in the don't bottom. Use the, don't use the touch screen. Here's... That's all right. I, I can use the touch screen just all fine. Right. All right. So these ones here, I mean, you can click them. You can either click the, uh, let's see. Let's see if the pen works. The approve now button. That will download the next one. But if you want yep. to remove without downloading. You want to remove without downloading. Also, also, Josh gets a point for using the highlighter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I believe you can uh, delete on that, or you can go into the package settings itself. So we could go to the Win SCP package. Uh, we could change the, uh, the the approval settings there, or we could change them globally as well to get rid of them. So you have the under options. Just uncheck that, and you can set that to manual. So it's going to change it to manual. But it's not going to get rid of it. Correct. All right. So does Josh get two points because he answered the question and used the highlighter? Yep. Yes, he does. <laughs> That's how it works. Wait a minute. So oh. catch up. <laughs> That's eight points, Jordan. <laughs> Good job. That's a negative eight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Negative. Here we go. Any plans on PDQ integrating end user remote support RC tool in PDQ classic slash connect? Peter L. All right, I have the answer here, uh, and I'm Ooh. jumping in. Kelly's okay. getting the point. I'm not really going to get the point. Mark is going to get the point, one of our development uh, gurus. He uh, saw this question coming up and posted an answer for me. He says, we're focused on the core features that exist in uh, deploying inventory and bring them into Connect. We are absolutely looking at adding remote control to PDQ Connect, but it'll come after we get PDQ Connect into production. So... Yes, but it will be a little while before we get to that. Yeah. So, uh, All right. One can I, point for Mark. Can I get a point oh, yeah, still for ahead, showing ahead, how to Josh. do it in inventory? Yeah, I guess you can. Right now? You sure you don't want the mouse? Yeah, I might want the mouse okay. for this one. <laughs> don't, don't you mean inventory classic? Inven is, is that what we're calling it now? All right. Was well, this like a classic what, Coke, new Coke thing? Or vanilla. That's, that's yeah. what it was called in the question. So yeah, uh, true. tools are super powerful in inventory. Uh, so as far as like remote, we've got, you know, built-in remote desktop, built-in remote assist. These are just Windows built-in utilities. Uh, there's also a built-in for VNC if you're still using VNC. But in the case that you're using something maybe like Screen Connect or TeamViewer, uh, go and build a custom tool. Uh, we showed this last week uh, that you can call whatever your favorite screen sharing utility is via a tool with the computer name as a uh, parameter. I think we still have the PowerShell for that one up. Oh, this is it right here. Yep. So this is a, a team viewer where you've got the client ID for the computers. So we're pulling that out and starting team viewer with the, the computer name and it's a client ID. So that one, and you set the client ID as a custom, I want to say. It's a custom field. Custom field. Yeah. So it automatically connected. When you select, select the computer, it automatically pull in the custom field. So they don't have to manually type that in or... Worst case scenario, ask the user to go find it. Exactly. Yeah, I I tried to uh, to comment the script, you know, but uh, it should be pretty self explanatory on that one. Who gets a point on that one? Do I get a point? All right. So we have Mark with a point, Josh right. with a point, and an odd the audience with a point for coming up with PDQ Classic. <laughs> nice. My lead's evaporating here. <laughs> All right, Kelly, we got another one. Let's ask some sports which, questions. Which means, <laughs> hold on, which means that Jordan and Josh are tied uh, because Josh did use the highlighter first. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right, you guys ready? Here we go. Does the new PDQ Deploy have similar tech as Smart Deploy so that it installs locally through the agent? Sincerely, Tom, the H is for Help Desk. So I believe that that one, it doesn't uh, install locally. I believe the agent's going to connect to your uh, your PDQ connect and install it that way. I don't know if it pulls the file down or not. 
Yeah, I mean, the uh, the agent on, on the machine is executing the install, so that machine can be anywhere with an internet connection. Uh, the agent is initiating outbound connections uh, back to connect uh, to, to listen for instruction sets. So short answer, yes. Uh, it installs very similar. I, I don't know who to give the point to. How about one for each of us and we stay tied? I get it. Okay. We're, we're, we're I, did you give one to Glenn? But Glenn didn't say anything. It doesn't matter. It That's said, true. It, it I said, didn't. But. Yeah, but it said smart deploy, so you get it by default. <laughs> All right. Go so ahead. Another words and, uh, we need to avoid. Well, I, I am, go state your piece. I am, I'm curious. I'll go ahead and uh, and ask the uh, the clarification question here. Where do the packages live in this uh, scenario? Are they being pulled out from the package library, or do they live uh, on a uh, user server? I'm, I'm not exactly sure how that fits with the PDQ Connect framework, because I'm not as familiar with that product yet. So, uh, I mean, we've only had our hands on the alpha ourselves, so we're not real. We there, there's a couple different options. Either. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong question to ask, then. There, there's a couple different options that are getting explored, right? Like, uh, it could be something that's hosted on Connect itself. It could be in the case of an uh, application like Chrome, where we can pass a download URL, you know, to the MSI, go get it directly from the vendor. There's a, there's a handful gotcha. of ways that it could be done. I don't think anything's set in stone, you know, as we are at an alpha product stage yeah i mean that flexibility is kind of where i expected it would go i mean that's that's essentially how we approached it with smart to play as well um you have the mm -hmm. option to pull it down locally over a vpn connection from a network share within your environment you could pull it down from your cloud storage provider you can pull it down directly from the vendor if they have a consistent url that you can download it from you can do that as well so yep. so now he does get the point All right mm, look at that bam you're just gonna start saying you baited me into it. it i had to nicely <laughs> played three-way three -way point there all right. Are we ready? Let's do it. We're ready. Okay. I'm using the content of an environment variable as a custom variable. How can I update the custom variable when the environment variable changes? Now it only updates when I restart PDQ. Sincerely, Dexter, not the serial murderer guy on TV, L. Maybe it is. Okay. That makes me really think he's the serial murderer guy from TV. Uh, it could be Dexter's Laboratory. I think I could be wrong, but I am fairly certain that there is a command line flag to do this. There is for the center that a little bit so we can yeah. so we can zoom yeah. in. So you wanna I'm sorry. They're just the center of the window. Yeah. No thanks. So there is a, a PDQ inventory command line that is a PDQ inventory update custom variable. But the, the the question I have for this one while you're typing that out, you have yeah. extra space in Ooh, there. Thanks. Is are, is the environment variable he's grabbing from the deploy the server that deploys on, or is he grabbing the environment variable from the local machine to update it? Because if you use the CLI to do this, but you're grabbing the environment variable from the local machine, it's going to be incorrect, or from the server. Like, I'm, I guess I'm curious where what where the environment variable is. Yeah, that would yeah definitely make sense. So know what context you're in, uh, but the PDQ inventory commands are run local. So even if you have to go, you know, uh, you know, invoke the command to return that variable on a remote machine and then pass it back. It's in the chat. It's from the central server. Oh, if so it's from the central server here, CLI is perfect. Though. Yep. So you pass the name and then the the string and or value that you want updated to. Yep. So and if he says when has it when it logs on, that's just something where you could have like a scheduled task that kicks off based on. When it sees the exe pop up for deploy your inventory, it runs the CLI by default and updates that. Yeah, yeah. So there's a handful of ways to do that. Josh gets the point. Point to Josh. So right. what's what's the uh, the tally so far? Where are we at? You want everything? We got yeah. Jordan with yeah. four, Josh with five, Glenn with two, audience with one, and Mark with one. Okay. Well, my insurmountable lead has evaporated. It's close. A little bit. All right, next uh, next one up. Why is there so much fragmentation in the package library? E.g., Chrome disables auto update, but Firefox doesn't. Sincerely, Kevin, the T is for tonight is your night, bro. So, Kevin, the package library is driven very much so from customer request, um, and and kind of we're trying to serve you know the most people that we can. Uh, so that's why there's some differences that you might see inside of that package library. Um, in the case of Chrome, um, 
that's a pretty easy switch back and forth with a pre and post step. I'm not sure that Firefox is quite as easy um, to, to disable or enable that. So it's it's been driven primarily by customer request. I have to imagine the default behavior from across different software vendors is a factor here as well. Because if nothing is specified, what will it do by default? Exactly. I don't actually know, the, know what Firefox does by default. I don't know either. Off the top of my head, actually. I haven't used Firefox in a very long time. I, I use Firefox routinely. I just haven't paid much attention to it. Ah. Let's see here. He's on a three-year-old version. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure no, it's no up to risk. date. It's auto-updating. So, oh, okay. Yeah. okay, here we go. Ready, set. I have I a question. Know. Well, no, no, not not ready. You're not ready. I don't know who gave the point. Do I give the point to anyone on that last one? Maybe Josh. Josh for answering. He, uh, he gave the, a good it's a, definition yeah, it's of why it is the way it was. All right. I always just give them to Glenn because it's Glenn. Carry but, on, Kelly. Okay, here we go. I have a question. How to monitor the DHCP using PDQ? Sincerely, hum, hum. So... I mean, if you're looking for like active monitoring, inventory does not do active monitoring. If you're looking for it, just uh, it's a scan that kicks off every so often. Uh, I haven't messed with it a lot, but there, you could probably, you could write a PowerShell scanner that runs against that machine right. and would pull that data in there. But if you're looking for like active monitoring, I don't know of a way that we could we could do that. It's kind of with the agent list. The reasons. Yeah, I'm not I'm not quite sure how to answer that question. Other than that. Yeah, so I mean, we could get the periodic updates within a certain table, but it's not going to be real relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have from a year ago. I wrote some monitoring where it was it would take what's in inventory and it would build a time series database. So you might be That's able to cool. you might be able to read, <coughs> read through that one mm -hmm. or and uh, modify it to work specifically for your DACP. That way, you'd have a dashboard. It, it goes into. Uh, I've already forgot the name of my time series database. Grafana. Grafana, yes. Yeah. Grafana. So you could have Grafana. Yeah, no DB to, to Grafana, right? Yeah, so you, you could do something like that where you'd have a dashboard for that, but that's going to require quite a bit of customization. I think so. All right. I'm going to give Jordan a point, and then... Was that Chase that coughed? I'm going to give him a negative point. Negative point for coughing? <laughs> it wasn't me. It was Sean. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh, Sean's on the board. Yeah, Sean, Sean's here. So Sean's on the board with negative points. That's, that's not. Uh, nice. Chase getting thrown under the bus. <laughs> I just heard someone over in the distance. I'm like, who's out there? That's, that's... Okay. okay. So uh, we're, we're in a situation that um, I cannot remember the last time this happened. This actually right now is our last question. Unless oh, wow. something else comes in you while they're start answering typing this. Them in now. <laughs> Get them in, or anyway. Here we go. What's the role of product keys in PDQ inventory? Is it for Windows or Office? Sincerely, P. Coltrane. I, I would imagine that we're talking about... Scroll down. This here. And that is something that we... I say deprecated like initially like yep. we, we show were it? looking in places where we could pull in up by default product keys but it was just in so many unique locations that we yeah I think it was inventory nine that this went away I want to say as uh, when product keys were deprecated it was uh, primarily due to the fact that different software vendors just kept moving where they were storing those keys and even more vendors were just getting rid of keys altogether uh, become yeah, less and it's less hard to maintain. Yeah, it was less and less useful. Uh, you can still manually add keys into here, right? With the the new button, you type the name, the product. Smart deploy the key. is yeah. one of those vendors that did away with product keys. Guilty. Yeah, yeah. it's just it's, there's too much inconsistency. It's completely out of, out of your control, and it's I mean to to get get that like different products are gonna like we can't account for all products that people might have with with one scan. It was just one where it was just it was becoming partially useful some of the time too often yeah the reason it's still I'm, around I'm is on an upgrade you didn't want to lose that data or remove that data from someone who was using it i'm going to pitch another feature okay. powershell scanner so also you can, that you can scan yeah you can you can grab if you if you can grab uh the data you can get it in powershell scanner uh 
I think we have something for like Dell and HP, right, Jordan? Yeah, you want to show that for their in the the GitHub. The oh the yeah portal switch. Are we just looking for the uh, <laughs> the repo? Yeah, the repo we can show people where we've got a bunch window. of this stuff. You can go import it, run it, return your own data before JJ yells at me and resize. Well, it's just because we're stalling for time. Yeah. I mean, Even yeah, that's, that's why. Are we getting more more questions in right now, Kelly? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're good. Mm -hmm. hmm. All right. So these are the current existing scanners we have. Uh, it's a, If you're using Git, it's a single line. To install that one, it's just this uh, Git clone. It grabs it from there. We have it just on the C drive PowerShell scanners, but you can just, if you want to put it in a specific location, just change this last bit here. Mm -hmm. And that's what will download all these two, so you don't have to work, worry about updating those on your own. Nice. But you said we had one on the Dell BIOS information? There was that. There was, I forget what the other one was. But there, there's a handful of them in there that return very similar data that, that people have had. Um, and, you know, it's community-driven, so if you find something and you want to add it, yeah. go ahead and add it. Yeah, it's, it's actually monitored. If, if you have something you've written for PowerShell Scanner, submit it, and we'll go through, we'll go through an approval process. Mm -hmm. But not everything in here was written by us. We have a lot of uh, customers that have contributed, which makes it, I think, just a, a better option all around. It just becomes more powerful. Cool. Right. Points? Uh, I'm not going to give myself a point, but I mean, I'll, give, I'll give Jordan one. Uh, so we're we're now tied. Ooh, take it. all right, tied game. We're in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Let's do this thing. Let's do this, gentlemen. Are you guys going to reflect IPv6 addresses on the main computer info screen like you do for IP addresses, so we can see both IPv4 and IPv6? I'd rather not build a WMI or PowerShell for it. Sincerely, Avi. I love, I love veiled. Feature requests. I do questions. too. I, I'm also curious, just for my own curiosity, if uh, if Avi, if you're running dual stack IPv4 and v6, or mm -hmm. if you've finally pulled the plug and gone IPv6 only. I'm just kind of curious, yeah, like impressed. for the audience, be... you know, where where that kind of is. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely a, a cool feature request. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure we have people. Diligently taking notes. I think that's one. IPv6 is becoming more and more a question. I think it's the the transition is finally starting to happen in more. Case. I don't think it's super common to be IPv6, but I think it's becoming common enough where it's yeah. worth looking into. I mean, I mean, most people run a dual stack just because there is some places on the internet where uh, IPv4 is still only IPv4. So unless you're doing a six to four tunneling, good luck. And also, I was about to ask, what are the what are the uh, situations, or what's what are the hangups for switching exclusively to IPv6? Well, any any device that doesn't do IPv6, yeah, you've got to do six to four tunneling. Uh, so, uh, you know, in very very simple terms, it's like NAT, yeah. but worse. Our, our network guys in the chat saying never go full IPv6. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not going to question Austin on it. No. Yeah. <laughs> and he did it in so the, all so caps. Those... So yeah. <laughs> So those Internet of Things stuff that you have on your network at work, yeah. The... yeah. You know, you're not sure exactly what's going to break if you do a full. I guess, I guess if you just want to find it all at once. Yeah. Just do it. Pull the plug. <laughs> nice. I don't right. know if we actually answered that question. So well, I'm well, no, we, we, we did. We uh, acknowledge that it's becoming more uh, relevant to, to try to track that. And the product's not just in standby, yeah. so it's something worth documenting. I don't know if that's going to be a difficult. Can I can I give the points to the developers if they add it in? I mean, yes, it's a, it's a pending right. points to the developers. Yeah, hold those in the okay, bank. Okay, pending point. Yeah, pending. Sounds point. good. All right, here we go. Are there plans to add new features to PDQ inventory and or deploy, or is it only at the maintenance level? Sincerely, Marcel L. Marcel, there are still new features and and things in the works for deploying inventory. I think if Randall's on the chat, he'll come in and he'll say the exact same thing. So uh, I, I asked when we were doing pre-show to this if we can talk about some of the features they have road mapped, and we've learned our lesson on that, and I can't talk about it. But I know what's on the roadmap, and what they've got planned is awesome. Like I'm excited. I'm excited for the updates for deployment inventory coming. I am as well. Maybe IPv6. Maybe <laughs> maybe IPv6. It's on the table. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, uh, I'm just going to give both Jordan and Josh a There point, you go. Which Keep doesn't even. do anything because you both are just tied. Mm, nice. <laughs> All right. Next one up. Can we expect soon to see ready made dashboard for monitoring? Hamam. Um, um, um. So, ready made, I do not believe so. Uh, not for deploying inventory. I don't, I don't think out of the box for connect. I don't know if that's yeah. on the future plans. Uh, I, I have built it out it, with some customization. I think we're going to revisit that shortly or I don't yes know we are will. as yes. a matter of fact yeah. I, I was just going to bring that up you have a monitoring solution and it's very cool so we're going to revisit that on it, an upcoming webcast it takes some uh takes some setup but i'm pretty sure we're just revisiting it so they'll get me to shut up about this <laughs> <laughs> i'm very proud of that power jordan, show. jordan always wants more eyeballs on <laughs> On the stuff that he's really proud of, and he is really, really proud of this. It was really Although not cool. proud enough to make a blog post about it. Hint, hint. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I get you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm giving you a point. All right. For, for Jordan, a pending webcast. Uh, pending. For a pending webcast, and for the past three webcasts that we did about this topic, uh, give me a minute. I'm going to go grab those links, and I'll post them in the chat. Those were the fun. They, all three weren't planned. I wrote the first one, and then we just kept on finding ways to improve it. So every week it was it was a new and addition a yeah. and a little more. Okay. <laughs> but the, the final oh, the final version, this. I was really proud of. It was a full functioning dashboard. Yeah. All right, we have another question, and I'll be honest, this one is going to Mark. Yeah. How is the alpha testing going so far? Sincerely, Tim M. Uh, Mark's answer is, it's been great so far. We have a handful of customers using it right now and providing feedback. We're learning a lot and already incorporating their feedback. We're still on track to delivering the product this year. That is awesome news. Give Mark points for that one. Well done. I think you can have two points for that one. I would agree. Give him two points for that. I'll just give him one because that's the rules. (laughs) Oh, Fine. He didn't use the highlighter first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what happened to... Uh... Oh, never mind. Sorry. Uh, okay. Carry on. I was, I was trying to find the monitoring one, and there was only two parts to it, but it was a... Uh, there's there's a couple of videos that we did about yeah. monitoring. Yeah. So uh, for the question for Daryl in the chat, has not name been chosen? It's PDQ Connect. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. No points for that. I don't know. You saw it. No, you, it you saw it. Yeah, you should get two because you saw it and you called it out. So, <laughs> yeah. all right, we do have our final question. Okay, are we ready? All right, here it is. We folks. are. Let me let me first let me first uh, say this comes down to the winner because, or at least a tie because Jordan with. I'm sorry. You know what? No, you you're both still tied. They're both kidding. still tied, uh, and yeah. you cannot answer this until I've I've finished reading the question. <laughs> why you can't don't read my mind. why don't you break <laughs> the disable auto update out into its own package? Like how there was a package to change search provider in Firefox. Kevin T. All right. So <laughs> see, <I> jumped in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's okay. It's it's uh if we have multiple four uh, has auto disable and not. It's just going to become cluttered and messy, and we do have the pre and post steps, where for those users that do want to change, it's a quick add on to that package, and that that maintains through the updating. So it's a quick add to change the package. So to keep it a little bit cleaner and not have too many options, we just have the default, and then give people uh, the post step where they can correct it after. Yep. Not that winning was important to me. <laughs> no, <laughs> Jordan, you won. <laughs> Yay! You win. Nothing. That's all right. <laughs> All right, so what is the final total here, JJ? Josh, you have nothing to contribute there? You don't want to tell us? Uh, yeah, I got it. He, he nailed it. I got nothing. <laughs> All right. Well That's done. Fair. That's fair. All right. Give me a minute. I'm Take still trying to these links. He's doing but, math. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, carry on with the post show. All no, right. let's, uh, let's do this. Uh, let's do this in order. So first, we've got the audience with... One point. Well done. Mark. Yeah. Mark with two points. Oh, nice. Glenn with three points. Yes, Glenn. Yeah. Josh and Jordan. 
We, we already know who won. Oh. <laughs> We've got Josh with eight points, Jordan with nine. You did it. You did it. It's nice. Big round of applause for everyone. It, there you go. It, it took four years. Uh, I'm not going to be graceful about this. Expect me to try to put together a parade later in the office. Uh, this has already gone straight to my head. No doubt. No. <laughs> Until next month. <laughs> it does every... I won uh, Scott. I, uh, I, I forgot to say Sean with negative one point. Yeah. Sean, uh, <laughs> negative one. Well done. All right. Ready. Camera two. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I love PDQ&A just because we get a lot of unique questions that we don't normally think think to ask. Uh, plus, I got to talk about future monitor webcasts, which I'm yep. so excited for. They're I love cool that one. Cast. All right. Uh, but uh, thanks for uh, helping me get the win. Uh, take that, Josh. For pdq.com, I'm Jordan. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> Thank you for joining our webcast today. Congratulations, Kevin T. and Dexter L. Winners of PDQ Swag. Send us your info at webcast at pdq.com. If you enjoyed our webcast, do us a favor and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would make for a wonderful weekend for all of us. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you back here next time.